Hi everyone and um, welcome back. Thank you to everyone who watched the first part thing episode. Let's call it an episode, that seems the easiest way. Um, the first episode of this short little podcast, vlog cast, vlog, again, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm sure that will make more sense eventually. I wanted to take you a few, a few things today that um, it's a couple of a finished project, a project that I'm working on at the moment, one that I'm about to cast on, and also a little bit of festive fun. So I've been to a few craft fairs over the last couple of days in my local area and picked up some pretty things that I thought I might share with you as well. So I hope you like that. So first of all, I wanted to share with you my Iona dress that I finished in time for the frost fair. I finished it with two days to spare, which is very exciting. Unfortunately, in the end, because of the weather, the frost fair was cancelled. We had really bad wind and rain down here and um, the organisers decided that for safety it made sense to cancel the event, which was a real shame. Um, I'm really glad that I already had plans to wear this dress to my works Christmas party as well, so it will definitely get an outing this year. Um, showing you this on a video might be tricky, I will do my best. Um, so, oh, that's the back. <coughs> So this is the front, so hopefully as you can see I have put um, around the top with the James C. Brett chinchilla that I mentioned last time, um, just to get, give it a little bit of snowy effect, and I did the same on the hem at the bottom as well. Let me see if I can share this with you. So I'm really pleased with this dress. It's got, a, I put a lot of extra increases in the skirt because I've got really big hips and I wanted to make sure that it would definitely definitely fit me and it does it fits me really nicely so I'm really pleased with that um I will try and get a picture of me wearing it at my works Christmas too where I will have the big mad wig the antlers um the face paint and everything else that goes with it as well so you can see the full outfit in its glory but I'm really pleased with this project it's my first proper proper garment knit as well which is really exciting to finish that um I've done lots of accessories in the past, lots of scarves, hats, mitts, blankets, shawls, things like that. Um, the only thing sort of garment wise that I've done similarly before was a poncho, um, which I really love. And it has been really, that is really soft and cosy and it's perfect for the train rides where I wear it on in the mornings. Um, but it's not exactly shaped. So this was my first proper, proper garment knit and I am super pleased with it. So yeah, I will share some photos of that hopefully once I've had a chance to wear it properly with the full get up and you can see, and that might be in the next video. Um, as soon as I finished it, and it was a great relief to be able to knit on something else, and as much as I have enjoyed the Iona dress as a project, it's been, especially as it got to the bottom of the skirt and the rows got really, really, really long, it did get a little bit frustrating. Really pleased to have done it and actually I'm really, happy with it as it as a knit as well but I was very pleased to get to the end of it so as soon as I did um, I cast on a new project and I'm doing this one for my as part of the blame Dunder knit along um, so I'm blaming Caroline over at Vicarious Knitting for this one um, and what I've started is this so this is a brioche um, shawl it's called all About That Brioche by Lisa Hannes, Haynes. Um, and I am knitting it in this wagtail colourway by Lorna Jane Makes, which is a, um, a sock yarn base. Um, Lorna Jane is a fairly new to indie dyeing, but she's got some really beautiful colourways. So I snaffled this one as soon as I saw it because grey and yellow are two of my absolutely favourite colours. And she also may, um, did make a bespoke black and red dye lot for me which I'm using to knit up a separate shawl for my drumming group with my drumming group's colours are black and red so you'll see that one in the future as well um but yeah so so far oh you could I just finish finish the rows so quickly it's so lovely to make progress I'm I really like I know some people don't like pooling in sort of striping colours I really love the way this is pooling in different places because it's growing, the pooling is happening in different places and at different times, it's not consistent. 
and it just makes it feel very organic I think it's a little bit it reminds me a little bit of um, like the grain you get in wood with sort of bits coming in and out and that kind of shape to it so I'm, I really like that I think I've got about another three rows to knit of this section of the shawl and then it gets into the brioche bit and I can't do that yet because I'm still waiting for the arrival of the contrast colour that I'm going to be using and I've never done brioche knitting before either so that will be a new thing I'm all about the new at the moment that's great really excited about that so this goes on hold for like two days until the next yarn arrives which is a grey contrast colour that I've gone for I said I love grey and yellow together um but it's just a plain grey so I'll have the stripes on one side and the grey on the other and they'll sort of mesh it in the middle um yeah, and I think that would be really interesting to see. I'm really looking forward to that. I think that would be quite quite modern and punchy. I think that would be really nice. While I'm waiting for the second patch of the yarn to arrive so I can finish that, I am going to cast on something with this beautiful baby. So this is um, Countess of Blaze yarn. This is, again, it's sock yarn. Persephone sock yarn, I think. And this is the, if I want exposure, I'll get my tits out colourway which I could not resist when I heard about the story behind it and um, the Countess's plans for that. So I've been looking for the right project for this. I lost my favourite fingerless mitts, or just one of my favourite fingerless mitts on a train journey into work, or possibly from work, or possibly in the middle of London, um, a week or two ago. So I'm in desperate need for new mitts, so I'm going to cast on some of those. I've also got some... Um, Daughter of a Shepherd yarn, which I'm also going to make some fingerless mitts with. So I've got two lined up on the thing and um, on my queue to make. And if I can get them done sort of over Christmas, by Christmas, that would be lovely to keep my fingers toasty and warm throughout January and February when it's going to be miserable and grim. I mean, it's pretty miserable and grim at the moment, but especially miserable and grim. So we'll try and see what I can do about that. I also wanted to share with you... so. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen this already. I have started a front door advent. Um, over the past, well, it's probably about over the past 18 months now, I've been taking pictures of people's front doors um, because I'm strange and because, and because I'm strange. Um, <laughs> and I've been collecting doors, all the doors with different numbers on the front doors. I've been collecting all the ones from sort of one through to 24. And I've got various different ones for different houses, for different numbers and, what I'm doing this year and I'm hoping to do in the future is a front door advent calendar. So if you go into my Instagram feed, you can see so far pictures of two front doors, um, number one and number two, and you have to open the door and there's a photo behind it. And my, the story behind door number one was about, let me see if I can find it and I can show you. Um, my husband, well, I made for myself and my husband a few years ago, I made us some advent calendars. They're fabric ones, they're made of little pockets, and then each year we hang them up again and we each put something in each other's advent calendar. And um, as a, it's just a way for us to be a little bit silly and to treat each other a little bit. And under my uh, my first pocket this year, I got two tiny little mini, mini skeins of yarn, um, which is by Stardust Homemade Crafts. I think they're, I mean, they're really pretty, but very tiny. Um, so that's a red and white with a little bit of pink in it, and that's the Yoho Yoho um, colourway. And then this one, which is more sort of golds and purples and a little bit of glitter, love a bit of sparkle. Um, and that's the treasure chest colourway, and so Stardust Homemade Crafts. Um, there's probably only, I, I need to weigh these, but there's about five or ten grams at most on these little mini skeins. So should be really great for little projects, little tiny, tiny projects. And then this morning in my pockets, I got another two little mini skeins. Um, again, following the pirate theme because because pirates. You'll find out more about my love of pirates next year. Um, and the black and white one here is the little Jolly Roger theme. And this bright, beautiful sort of neon greens and yellows and pinks, that's the Polly Parrot colourway. So a little bit of a theme. A whole bunch of pirate based little mini skeins there. Um, these will probably all go towards my um, beekeeper's quilt, but um, we'll see. Um, unless I think of something really exciting else that I want to do a bit, but that's the plan for them at the moment. And I'm now really excited to know what else is going to be in my pockets for the rest of 
December. Brilliant. Other things that I wanted to show you, um, so as I've mentioned before, I live in Hastings, it's on the south coast of England, and we've got a really vibrant sort of creator crafter community around here. Lots of artists, lot of creatives, lots of Etsy sellers and things like that. And over the past three days, we've had loads of little craft markets popping up. So on Friday evening from work, I went to one craft market up at All Saints Community Hall. Um, yesterday, we went to a crafters pop-up emporium thing at Hastings College. And today I've been down to an Etsy sellers pop-up um, down at the Stade Hall in, in Hastings. And I've picked up a few pretty little things along the way. So first one I wanted to show you is this really adorable little flamingo pin which is a little wooden pin with all the glitter shiny little glitter um this was by i think dear diary vintage and i'm looking forward to giving that an outing i really got into sort of pins and brooches recently i used to love necklaces and i still love necklaces but i never actually wear them so Brooches are working better for me at the moment. I'm not going to get rid of my necklaces, obviously, but brooches are a thing that's working better for me at the moment. So I was, yeah, there we go. Glitter, shiny. Um, so I really like that. Um, also, while I was at that one, I picked up these, which are really fun. So these is this is by Sussex Botanicals. And the idea is these are essentially little tea bags, but they're for dunking in your gin to make your gin taste like really posh gin um the one that i've got here it's called mediterranean shores and it's sort of got rosemary thyme black olive salt and pepper in it and you could put it in other spirits but it's designed with gin in mind and you essentially dunk it in the gin like a tea bag like if you're doing herbal tea um and dunk it in and it infuses into the gin and you suck up um suck out all the flavors from the tea bag and you have really um then infused gins so had a little taster on the day that was really nice so i couldn't resist getting a little bag of those to see me through the festive season um what else did i get oh nice little chocolates so this is from the c note they're artisan chocolate here again they're based in hastings you probably can't see the label very clearly on that but these are little black cherry chocolate drops which are wonderful and really amazing and that and oh it's on the tree already you can see the autumn colors autumn decorations have come down it was autumn leaves behind me last year the christmas stuff is starting to go up I've got christmas lights up fairy lights up um there are always fairy lights in my house all year round they just it's the colors of them that change so it's now winter so it's more blues and whites and creams um over autumn i had you know reds and oranges and browns and golds and yeah, now we're interviewing, so there'll always be lights. But the other one that I picked up at the fair is this little one here. Yeah, so each year, um, Neil and I make a point of buying at least one really special new Christmas decoration. So from when we moved in together eight years ago now, um, nine years ago, nine years ago, don't tell him I got that wrong. Um, nine years ago, um, yeah, each year we bought ourselves at least one really special Christmas decoration and sometimes a couple of extra ones, but sort of building our collection of things that, that mean something to us. They're usually almost exclusively made by sort of local craftspeople, so they're all a little bit unique and a little bit special. So this is the one that we picked up this year. So this was when we were up at the All Saints Hall and this is by Peachy Pottery, um, who are on Facebook and Instagram, so I will link to them. Um, and just, it's a really beautiful, just little star, um, snowflake shape. So that's, again, very pleased with that. So that's going back on the tree. The tree's not fully decorated yet, and I will have a little Christmas tree as well. I've got a little black artificial Christmas tree that I picked up, oh, a number of years ago, 15 years ago, and it's been following me around the country ever since. It's a tiny little one, everything has to be a miniature on it, but. My house is small and I haven't got space for a full size tree. So I will have my tiny little Christmas tree and then I've got my LED tree, which stays up all year round because, because, because lights make me happy basically. So yes, so that was the little bits that I got at the State Hall yesterday at the college. Um, well, I saw something at the college and I know it has been purchased for me but I'm not allowed to have it till Christmas. So that will have to wait until 
later on to share that one with you. But I was very pleased when I went, oh, that's pretty. And Neil said, why don't you go and take a walk? So I did. And I, there was a bulky bag when I came back. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I got for myself um, while I was there, I got these, again, more little brooches, little seagull brooches by Made by the Sea. Um, so they're, they work together, but they're actually two individual pins, so you can wear them in different ways. And I've got some brooches already, which are like little fabric feathers. So I kind of like feel that they fit in with the same theme on that. So that's really lovely. And I also got, oh, another Christmas decoration because I get carried away. Um, I don't know if you can see these, but these like little holly leaves, again, little ceramic holly leaves, which I wasn't going to, but when I was buying the seagulls, they were there and kind of just happened. Um, but yeah, so those are the bits that I got yesterday. And then today at the, say, at the Stade Hall, I treated myself to a little project bag. Okay, so it's technically, it's been designed and marketed as a wash bag. But isn't this just like the most perfect little project bag for when I'm knitting those lovely fingerless mitts that I've told you that I'm going to make. Um, and they say, because it's a wash bag, it's got a lining inside, a waterproof lining inside. Um, and considering the rain that we've had recently and how all of my bags keep getting soaked by the rain on the way to work, little waterproof project bag, which means that I can put the pattern in it and not have the pattern turn to papier-mâché, that's actually quite handy. So, I mean, look at those little colours. That's really cute. Um, so this is by Designs by Lucy. Um, and again, just really pretty, cute little project bag. I've been getting project bag envy from all the podcasters that I've been watching on YouTube. So I'm quite, quite excited to start getting my hands on some project bags. Um, yeah. So that's been my little shopping haul. Um, I always get a little bit carried away around payday and then have no money for the rest of the month but it does make me happy so what can you do um we need to save up we really need to save up some money yeah but anyway but yeah that's me so i'm disappointed that we didn't get to the frost fair this year it's a shame but totally understandable from a safety perspective i think even if the parade had gone ahead the weather was so miserable that no one would have come and watched us, which would have been sad as well. It's it's always a little bit flat when you're at an event and people aren't really engaging with it or there aren't people sort of cheering. Whereas you, you can feel, as a performer, feel really lifted when there are people participating and cheering and genuinely excited to see you there. And yeah, that was just much less likely to happen in the rain. Um, so hopefully next year, but at the very least, say I have got the works Christmas party, I will definitely be wearing the the dress for that and I'll say I'll try and take some pictures in the full get up with you know gold and silver face paint and all the rest of it to really bring it to life and really show you what it was supposed to be like um one more thing that I picked up at the Hastings College Fair that I forgot to mention is this cute little pumpkin which I'm assuming they meant to be used as a pin cushion and it's not Christmassy but I've just finished taking the autumn stuff down off the tree and I had one lonely little pumpkin that I made out of a felting kit this year, um, which I picked up at the Knitting and Stitching Show at Alexandra Palace. So I really love that little pumpkin, but it did feel a bit lonely on its own. So when, and I had been talking about making more pumpkins to go on the tree. So when this little baby turned up at the market, I couldn't help it. So this isn't gonna see the light of day for like another nine months now, but he'll come out onto the tree again for autumn. So thank you again for everyone watching. Um, <laughs> again, if you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave comments below. I will put in links to as many of the designers and makers whose products I've shown you today as I can find. I'll put those in the YouTube comments below. Um, and the same for pattern links to my um, shawl and to the yarns and bits and pieces like that. Um, and yeah, thank you very much again for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.